and welcome to Castle Talk, where we talk to writers and creators of today's genre worlds. I'm your host, Jason Henderson, publisher at Castlebridge Media and writer of the 1950s surfer girl horror book, Night of the Bookman, new in audiobook. Tonight, we're chatting with Karen Warren, author of the book Slights, which is a re-release from IFWG coming out now. Karen, welcome back. Hi, Jason. It's so good to be back. Great to see you. It's really weird. We were just talking before we started recording that that you and I talked. We talked about The Grief Hall, which was such a beautiful book, and that was four years ago. Like, How is that possible? Like, it could have been <laughs> last year, right? How yeah. four years? I, I can't. I, it's difficult for me to... Well, it's sort of amazing to me, first of all, that I've been having these conversations about books for that long. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just, and it, and, and it never gets old. Like, you know, I, I, I really love it. But that, you were such a warm presence and, and we had such a good time talking about the grief hole that, uh, that, you know, it, it, yeah, it just, it does. It seems like yesterday. Yeah, um, it really does. Yeah. So slight, this is interesting because this was, uh, I think this was your debut novel. You know, it's coming out again now, debut novel, and this actually won some awards when it came out, correct? Yes, it did. Um, now, you guys put me on the spot because I can't quite remember. It was, I've made the long list for the Stoker. It didn't win the Aurealis, but it did win our Shadows Award and our Dittmar Award. Yeah, the, um, uh, and, and that was after you had, you had had something of a career writing, writing short stories. What, um, tell me a little bit about, uh, tell me about Slight's. Uh, and tell me why why is it coming back out? And then if if you don't segue right into it, I'm going to ask you about what it's like to reapproach work that you that you did a, a long time ago. But what is slights? Yeah. yeah. So slights, um, as you said, so I wrote slights in about uh, 2005, 2006, mm-hmm. um, and had received a grant from our local government to take some time off work to write it, which was really amazing and very Goodness intense. gracious. And the first time that I really had dead set time to just write. And I wrote slights and I wrote a short story that kind of accompanies it as well called The Speaker of Heaven, Mm -hmm. um, which is kind of the opposite to slights. So in slights, it's about a woman who knows what hell you're going to and everybody's hell is different. In The Speaker of Heaven, it's a woman who knows uh, what heaven you're going to and everybody's heaven is different. And I also wrote a novella called Sky in this same period of time. So this was all in three incredibly intense months uh, that I wrote this book. Um, and it is that it's a woman. Who, Wait, you wrote uh, the book in it, three months. I Just wrote make... most of it in three months. I wrote. I had already written a lot of it, and I knew what I was going to do with it. But the actual real words on page pretty wow. much happened in that three months. Yeah, I didn't have children then, so that was kind of a different <laughs> thing. <laughs> And I really was just so, um, I felt so lucky to have this time and I really was really driven to to write it. Um, so, wow. yeah, it's about a woman who accidentally kills her mother in a car accident and almost dies herself, ends up in this dark room where everybody, well, she doesn't know it at the time, but it's everybody she's ever slighted is wait, waiting to take a piece of her. Mm. So it's the boy from primary school who she pushed out of the way because she wanted to get to the water bubblers first. Yeah. And it's this person who she pushed in front of in the queue and it's all these sorts of things. And they're all waiting to take a little piece of her. And the woman at the corner shop and sometimes her own brother is there if he's annoyed at her because she dented his new bike, that sort of thing. So she becomes very obsessed um, with this place because she feels isolated and alone in her real life. In the dark room, she's the centre of attention. That's I love this idea story. that the that the slights, the, the, these these venial sins that we commit against one another, could actually haunt us in the afterlife and even shape our yeah. afterlife. Yeah, that's right. That's a that's a horrible nightmare. That's a that's a that's, <laughs> that's amazing. Terrible. It yeah. is. Well, it also it's also being slighted yourself. So a little piece of yourself is going off to all these dark rooms of all these other people as well. You know, so all those times when you can't let go of the silly things that happen in our lives. So it's a little bit about trying to let go of the small things that upset us. I was um, going to say, what what was your motivation there? Is it was it to try to grapple with why are we so why are we so haunted by all these little sins, or or what was going on? Yeah, it's partly that. It was also, and it's hard, it was inspired just by the concept that we all create our own afterlife as well and we create our own hells by the things we do. Um, I think as we, I think we chatted in our four years ago in our conversation yeah. then. Um, I can't remember if we talked about to my, uh, I had a slightly odd religious upbringing. So for a little mm-hmm. while my parents were Hare Krishnas. 
Oh yeah. And and there was a lot of Eastern stuff that we were we were learning about when I was um when I was young. So and the Hare Krishnas are very big on uh, hell as a punishment for the stuff you've done in your life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if you were an alcoholic, you go to a hell where you get molten metal poured down your throat. <laughs> and I don't even want to describe what happens to you if you were a an adulterer. That's pretty right. gross and nasty. Anyway, so I kind of had this um feeding away in my brain and just thinking about how we do create the lives we lead to a certain extent and also maybe our afterlives as well. Just curious wow. about, you know, can can you uh, escape what you've done in this life? Can you re reimagine yourself in the afterlife or does everything we do have an effect on us? And a little bit about that, you know, the choices, all the choices you make have an effect on our lives as we live them today. Like we're all where we are because of choices that we've made or things that have happened to us as well. It's not always, we can't always control it, obviously. Well, sure. Yeah, it's just a little bit of a fascination about the uh, the pathways that we're, that we're on. I mean, in fact, I think one of the possible names for it was um, the steel road and thinking about our, our shoes as being, you know, our feet being magnetic and we kind of led across this, along this road that either, either we're destined to go on or that we can mm-hmm. choose to take our shoes off and walk a different path, which sounds all very strange, but <laughs> that's kind of a little bit at the heart of it. But she's I, a really it, unusual, yeah, she's a very unusual character, the, the main character. Well, she's, uh, her name's Stevie, and I apologize for, for interrupting you. The, um, um, it's told from her perspective, <clears throat> very close in her her consciousness. So the and and I think what's what's really interesting is how how carefully observed it is. You know, the squalor that she's living in after her mom dies, and and her observations about people, and a lot of the really shitty things that have happened to her. You know, along the way, like like she she. Um, the the garden woman this woman who had who had kind of sexually abused it's very it's very vague but there's certainly a certain element of of at the very least sexual exploitation of yes. this of of these of these children by this this woman who they would come and and do her her garden and you know all of this is so so well observed and that's what i remember about the grief hole as well as and and i wonder when you think of yourself as a horror writer and maybe you don't this is such this is such an artistic kind of writing in other words the story is more about the characters themselves and then the themes and that is not how i typically think of of horror you know it, it, yeah. it, you know it, where where you know a typical horror book from the 1970s might be about a plague of locusts it's a story yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, exactly. and, and and you know i was just wondering you know uh knowing that that's the way that you write and i i think it's beautiful writing how do you feel about fitting yourself into the world of horror yeah it's interesting isn't it i think i think i probably do sit somewhere in between like i know um people who i know who read a lot find my stuff too disturbing to read so Mm -hmm. i guess for that reason i'm happy to be called a horror writer because i don't want someone picking up my book and feeling something they don't want to feel like i think horror readers choose to feel that way um we choose it's like people who read sad stories you know they choose to pick up something they know is going to make them cry at the end you know they they don't like crying like i don't want to cry i don't want something that's going to make you weep you know that's that's just not not the things that i want to read so i would like to know if something's going to be a tearjerker before i pick it up um so for that reason i'm happy to be known as a horror writer because i i just think i face things that uh, a lot of writers don't face who are outside the horror genre and instead outside speculative fiction i think spec fic really does face full-on um some of the awful things that happen in the world and i think maybe uh in the so-called literary world i've done my little air quotes there yeah (laughs) uh, they they, um they maybe balk a little bit at it so they're not willing to go as far as maybe needs to go in some of their storytelling and, and some of the plots and and the way the characters are depicted as well Right. Um, and I'm willing to have an, an unlikable character and people yeah. who behave badly and who are possibly either irredeemably bad or who behave badly but we still like them or we still understand them. Yeah. So I like to be able to understand why people do the things that they do and I guess that's an element of why it's horror to a certain extent as well. Um, so I'm I'm trying to understand why people do bad things to, right. to a certain extent. Yeah. So yes, I don't know if that answers your question or not. I'm, I I know that I write outside of what is 
the standard version of horror. <coughs> and so traditional horror readers may read something like Slights and not think that it's really horror because it doesn't necessarily scare them. But I'm more of the uh, let's disturb you and let's make you look in the mirror and see your Absolutely. own nasty cracks sort of stuff. So, yeah. So I kind of sit in this, this Netherland, I suppose, where the, um, you know, the people, the ladies who do book clubs don't really uh, get into my stories, I don't think. They find it a little bit too disturbing. I've done a couple of in-person book clubs. Um, yeah. Neither went all that well, I would say. Oh, really? They were lovely people, really lovely people. This is actually both of them with, for the grief hole. Um, and I don't think any of them really quite, yeah, I don't know. They found it all just a bit too confronting. And a bit too upsetting. And so yeah. they couldn't really say that they, yeah, I don't know. It was very interesting. And so it became a lot more about their feelings, like less about them asking me about the book, like what you're doing now, and more about them, them talking about how it made them feel, which was interesting. How interesting. But, yeah. I mean, I, I'm trying to think if I've ever been invited to a book club before. So so I don't know. I, 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 yeah, it's a, it's a the, nice idea. The funny idea. thing is Stephen King wrote about book clubs once, and the only story he has about book clubs is one that actually begins with the person leaving a book club. Right. In other words, <laughs> it's, it's, it's called Big Driver. It's about a writer who leaves a, leaves a book club meeting and then gets into this just a horrible series of, of misadventures. I don't think I've read that one. I've read stuff. almost everything. It's a novella. Um, yeah. It's a novella from um, Full Dark No Stars. Oh so, yeah, I've got that. I must have. I must have read it. I have to have another. It was. Read. It was made into a movie. I, I don't know why. Now I'm going off on full dark no stars. Anyway, that's okay. So so, but tell me something. So um, I've had this opportunity before where I've republished something that I'd written in that case twenty years earlier. Uh, in this case, you wrote this first about fourteen years ago. So uh, IFWG has done others of your books, and so here's your opportunity to see the book come back out again. Did you did you rewrite it at all? Did you brush it off? Tell me about the experience. Oh, I did a little bit of editing, but I kind of wanted to leave it mostly as is because I feel like it is it is what it is and kind of needs to stay mostly that. I did change. There were a couple of things that I um, didn't like. I feel like we've, the world's changed a little bit. Um, mm. it's the way I depicted a transgender person, I didn't depict them that way, but the way um, a group of policemen were talking about this transgender person, yeah. um, I didn't like the way that came across and I didn't think it would it would pan well at all. So I just mm-hmm. changed that. It was a really simple thing to change. And it's and, within your power to do so. You, you can yeah, change, that's right. exactly. change it all exactly. you want. Yeah. But I didn't, I didn't edit too much because I – Felt like oh yeah I don't know it was it was I did I thought once I started I'll never stop you know what editing's like yeah. you're never done right you never I... ever finished editing <laughs> but did I did find... I, I changed I changed a few little things like there was one thing because it was first published by an English publisher and they had oh. done things like they'd changed we call uh, rubber boots you know the rain boots I don't know what you guys call them um, uh, we. Uh... Gosh, that's a really good question. Galoshes or something? I don't know. Um, yeah. we call them gum boots. G U M. Really? Boots. Yeah. Um, but they call them the English call them Wellington, so they changed it to Wellingtons, and oh. I didn't like that because that's it's an Australian voice that I wanted. So I ch- so I changed that back to gum boots. I, I had oh, great funny. pleasure in doing that. <laughs> yeah, galoshes um, is what you'd call them, or rubbers in some right. parts of the country. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Isn't that um, funny? So yeah, there was an interesting process, and I've got the, another two coming out um, with Jerry that are uh, releases, re-releases as well. Um, and it's just yeah, it's really hard to know how much. And how much time to put into actually I don't want to rewrite them, put them put it that way. But yeah. definitely we'll just edit for edit for, you know, fifteen year later sensibilities to a certain extent. Yeah. I hadn't actually thought about the the sensibility aspect of it. You know, what strikes I don't, me. It is... doesn't really um it doesn't really affect it very much, but just this one thing, it was a really small moment and I thought I, it just seemed important to me. It was yeah. it was completely irrelevant to the story might cause something like a, a yeah but I, I haven't really done it very much elsewhere but i think i think you're right to do I'll so go. i think you're yeah. you're completely within your rights you know and also your sensibility or awareness of something might have changed yes. and, and yeah yeah like oh, why exactly. am i gonna why am i gonna needlessly drag myself into a bunch of twitter wars with people when yeah, i could yeah, just make right. a change <laughs> make a change and i wouldn't defend it like i couldn't defend it and yeah i, I could d- definitely say it was these police talking not my opinion their opinion but at yeah. the same time it was i could change it so easily so i did that one. Oh, good for you that's interesting yeah yeah do you find yourself uh you know I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to formulate this into a question but like 
10 or 15 years, a lot of things will change in your own mind and your writing might be different. So I yes. can tell, I know what you're talking about. Like in theory, you could be handed this manuscript and go, oh no, I need to change every line. None of this is how I would do it, yeah. you know, for only a portion, but you really, yes. you really can't, you know. No, you really can't. And it's been, yeah, that's right. I had to just say, no, look, I, I, that needs to be standard my life <laughs> and it's an artifact. But I definitely do change. Like I'm, I'm a totally, I've, I've lived overseas for three years in Senate and I've had children since then who had pretty much grown up since, you know. Yeah. So things I know, no, actually I had, I did actually have the kids um by the time Oh, I'll just try and figure out my timing. I must have written it actually earlier than that because I'm pretty sure I didn't have the kids. So I must have done this first draft um, even right. earlier than I said, yeah. So I'm just suddenly, I actually did have the children by 2005. So, yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, so definitely, you know, in that period of time, I've changed and my life has changed and the world's changed. Yeah. But I don't, yeah, but it really was written as it was written. And Walking the Tree, which is the next one to come out, I wrote mostly when I was living in Fiji. Um, but that was 10 years ago. So I'm a different person now that I was then as well, but I don't want to go in there and change that because I wrote it when I was living on this big island. Absolutely. Um, so, yes. Well, it's also really your head can be in a, yeah. a space. I mean, you, you know, uh, I, you can be writing something about like time in a submarine or something in that, and maybe you've spent the past three months before then doing nothing but steeping yourself in your research. Yes. So then yes. a publisher wants it and it's three years later. I've, I've faced this before. And you're okay. Like, ah, damned if I remember anything about <laughs> yeah. what caused me to choose to write the things you're writing. You're just taking a guess. It may as well have been written by a stranger and you're just yeah. trying to make it something you're not ashamed to put your name on, you know. It's, yeah. Isn't so. that really interesting? Because you, And you really do, I think, and then because you, you're moving on to the next story by then, isn't it? And you right. move through five stories by then and you've immersed yourself in that space. I just recently immersed myself in a haunted bus. You know? Oh, really? But then once you put yourself out of that haunted bus, then you're moving on to the next thing, aren't you? And that's part of, I mean, that's definitely that immersive thing is how yes. I write and how you do as well. In yes. that brain space, yeah, which is so much was so much fun. I love that about writing is being in that place so so completely. So, I just so you, yeah. Anyway, it's you do. Oh you no, do please, please. I, oh, we, we have another, a slight lag. Place. I apologize for interrupting you. No, no, not at all, <laughs> not at all. Just thinking about these places that you get immersed in. I just um, found an old advertisement um, for the Steering Wheel Club in an old Punch magazine. I love reading old magazines to find these little snippets of inspiration. Sure. And it was like a Punch magazine from 1962 or something like that. And a place oh, wow. called the Steering Wheel Club. Well, they had steering wheels, of, of famous steering wheels all over their walls. And, like, instantly, that's, okay, that's where my next story is set. No, and that's I wrote very that evocative. Story. Oh, yeah. isn't that wonderful? So, yes, but I had to really fully get into that, you know, that club and sit on the chairs and that sort of thing. Um, I discovered a club like that. I saw this picture, a grainy color photograph of this woman, don't know her, you know, like, you know, thirty mid-30s woman in a white outfit standing in front of this crappy little coffee shop in California. But, and I'm not making this up. It was called Cafe Frankenstein. And oh, I was like, wow. I'm doing a book about that club. Oh, my God. I, I didn't even know anything about it. And I was just like, let's go find out everything we can find out about yes. this place. It's not there anymore. And it was That's so fun. Fantastic. Wow. I love it. Sometimes you can just like... It's really as though, as though we're being, this is going to sound way more fruity than, than I am <laughs> spiritual, but sometimes it's as though uh, we get hints and you, and you decide you're go, just going to chase it. Like you discover a children's program from the fifties you never knew existed. And you go, my next job is just going to find out everything about that. Yeah. I'll bet you there's a story there. And there is usually, you know, <laughs> it, it like, totally is. Yeah. 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 But but why yeah, and I love that that um little that little flicker that we get that makes us think there's a story here and that we can follow it yes. through. And how much fun it is when you start to discover all these little these little segues and little stories that are behind that. Yes. Then just um, something what you gotta write your story about, of course. Yeah. The uh uh so all right. So so slides is coming out again. I think it's actually out as we speak. It is out. It, yes, yeah. it's out. Yep. So it's it's newly out. Um, are you on Twitter talking? I mean, I, I don't I don't know where you are online. So where can I? Yeah, can I'm I Karen me? Warren on Twitter. So okay. Yes. I'm there, there every now and then, often tweeting. In fact, my next thing, I've just, you probably will understand this. One of my obsessions is finding little bits of old newspaper and finding stories in the old newspapers. And yes, my indeed. two day a week job is I work at a second hand item shop. So we oh, get really? boxes of stuff that come in that go to the rubbish dump and then they get cleared out of the rubbish dump and come to my shop. Wow. So we get, 
I know it's fantastic. I love it. So we get boxes of stuff, sometimes deceased estates, but just recently we've been getting boxes of stuff from a man whose wife left him suddenly mm. and he's now giving all his stuff away because he wants to sell oh. the house and move into an apartment. So right. we're getting, we get boxes of stuff from people's lives basically and sometimes in the bottom of these boxes or wrapped up, um, things have been wrapped up since 1962. So it might have been yeah. a wedding present or something. So I just got a 19, 1967. It's the uh, the classifieds from 1967. Oh, my newspaper love it. 1967. I know, including a lost and found section. And I have to read, let me just read you this one. Yeah, please. Um, and I was like, I'm going to do, this will be my next Twitter thing, I think. And so I can see it, you're holding me. it. It's a big yellow, big yellow it's paper. It's a big yellow thing. But listen, to, so there's a couple of absolute beauties on here. There's, sorry, there's a black plastic container that somebody lost. Got so you, <laughs> what was in that container that they want to put it in the lost and found. Uh, there's a couple of handbags. There was a pair of shoes and there was trousers. Trousers grey between Rushcutters Bay and Kensington. Somebody lost their trousers. <laughs> Nineteen sixty seven. Probably blew off the top of somebody's caravan, right? I just that's... absolutely love it. And anyway, so yes, that's gonna be my next. I thought I'd do a little series of um tweets about the lost in pound. So if people oh want to gosh, follow that's me, wonderful. Isn't that just great? A story in every single line there. Even the lost dogs is a story there. Karen, if you go to uh Etsy or, or eBay. Right. You can look for uh, diaries, filled out diaries. Oh, my so gosh. like so like people, you know, people die, people do whatever. And uh, and so people will sell old diaries on like Etsy and eBay. And it is the yeah. coolest thing Oh, because incredible. you find somebody's like I, f- I found this girl's diary uh, and she had gone to the coronation of uh, of Queen Elizabeth. Like, oh, my gosh. like after school. Oh. You know, oh and it was gosh. just this teenager, oh, just this wow. poor teenager with her crazy life going on. Oh my gosh, it was Incredible. so cool. Incredible. Yeah, they make the best gifts because my my daughter is a is a nutcase for the for history, and so I, I like yeah. to get her old diaries. Well, it's so, those little know. details of history, isn't it? And I guess that's what we started talking about with the way I write is the detail and the observations. Yes, it's those small observations that make make us connect with something. Yeah. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, like absolutely. Small details of what what color socks did she wear when she was? Did she change her shoes? And where, where did Don't she put her wish? shoes to the coronation? All that's that the stuff. Stu- that well, that's that's the stuff that you just want to dig up from like people's eight millimeter home films and yes, and, and, oh yes, and everything. You know the yeah the socks and everything. Um, I love it. The the character of Stevie in Slights really does come alive, and I, I really I've really enjoyed uh, reading this. Uh, okay. Slights, IFWG, it's new. What's your Twitter handle, Karen? Karen Warren. Karen Warren with a double A. Double um, A, yes. Double A R O N Warren. And um, gosh, I, I, you know, it's really a delight. I hope that we don't wait another four years to no. talk. No. No, no. Seriously, definitely. just I text me it. and go and go. Hey, I read something amazing and would love to come on and talk about it. We can That'd do that right. too. Yeah, yeah, you know? absolutely. So, I'll, I'll talk to you about some of the things I find in my shop. Yes, please. Yes. I'll, I'll follow you right now on Twitter. So great. Have a Fantastic. delightful Saturday. Thank you so much for spending Saturday morning with me, and 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 I will talk to you real soon. Bye, Jason. It's a pleasure. Bye, bye. Oh, thank you. Bye, bye.